It is extremely unfortunate that this, uh, that this discussion of Prop 25 has taken such a partisan character uh, because uh, I think every citizen in our great state of California uh, has run out of patience for the fact that we cannot pass a budget on time. Uh, that's not just Democrats uh, or Republicans or independents. It's all of Californians uh, are really disgusted with the fact that we can't pass a budget on time. And there are consequences to each Californian. Uh, businesses suffer, uh, schools suffer, uh, citizens suffer, all of us suffer from it. And so uh, to suggest that uh, Proposition 25 uh, would not help the gridlock that currently exists uh, in Sacramento is really a ludicrous. I mean, it's just, it's just an absurd notion. Of course it will help. And I think Mr. Taylor, uh, the legislative analyst, said uh, that this is a pretty straightforward and simple measure, and I think that that's true. Now, I will tell you, uh, I, for one, wish it did include tax increases, the ability to increase revenue, to solve problems and create priorities, but it doesn't. And the courts have said it doesn't. Uh, the, uh, any any uh, credible analysis of the proposition says that it simply means that a simple majority can uh, pass a budget. Uh, and for anyone to suggest that if the budget is passed on time by a simple majority, uh, that it won't be signed, uh, that would be up to the governor, whoever he may be. And so I think that uh, uh, we we need to to put this in to the proper perspective. Those that are arguing against this proposition uh, seem to be satisfied uh, with the current situation of gridlock, and it's and it's and it's unacceptable. And that's why we're here. Uh, we're not all satisfied uh, because the question of of revenue still has to be addressed uh, in the future. Uh, but I would suspect that with the passes of 25 come the constitutional deadline, a budget will be passed, and it will be, uh, and it may be passed uh, uh, with the revenues that exist, and it may be signed by a governor that, uh, that wants to move uh, the state forward. It doesn't eliminate the ability for two-thirds uh, of, uh, of the House to come together and, and agree that we need more revenues to fund priorities like schools. Uh, uh, but, uh, but, but that is uh, really uh, clear. And it's just disturbing to me that this campaign has started off on my way to Sacramento today, driving up here, I heard an ad uh, that talks about Proposition 25 will raise uh, taxes on the citizens in California, raise your, your, your income tax, your home tax, your I mean, I mean it, it, this is every tax possible. That's a very disingenuous campaign. It's not an honest campaign. And to try to confuse voters about a, a measure, a straightforward measure like this, I think is extremely unfortunate and doesn't serve the state. And so uh, I would ask Mr. Taylor uh, again, uh, in your opinion as legislative analyst, uh, does this proposition uh, raise taxes or allows for a simple majority of tax increases on the on the people of the state of California. Well, again, I'm I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not trying to be legislative counsel. But I think it's um, there's a be a huge burden that people trying to make that argument would have in going to the courts. That is, I, I think the two thirds vote to increase taxes would still be in place. Thank you, and I I hope that as this matter goes forward, that uh, the people of California read the initiative. And that's what this hearing is supposed to be about, us clarifying the purpose of the initiative. And uh, uh, this initiative doesn't raise taxes. Uh, it simply uh, streamlines the process that allows a simple majority to go on the record and to be held accountable for a budget on time that may or may not be signed by whoever is governor. And I would ask the uh, the uh, proponents of Prop 25 is that uh, in talking to the citizens, are people confused about whether or not this is a measure that clearly will not raise taxes uh, in your encounter, or uh, or is it 
uh, is that developing into some kind of problem and sort of disinformation campaign? Well, certainly it is. It's problematic when someone suggests that something that simply isn't accurate and makes the job of, of educating uh, um, always a challenge. But I think most people are reading the title and summary and sees that it says it does not raise taxes. And, and the truth is, 85 days into this budget crisis, people are pretty fed up and pretty ready for something, a different approach to budgeting, a different approach to getting things done. People are, are just kind of tired of seeing it go on and on and on, and there just seems to be no end to it. People are inclined to hope that this will make things better. Uh, I think the, the kinds of disingenuous um, uh, ads that are coming out will always be problematic, but I think we can make a clear argument, and I'm hopeful that we'll make a clear argument. And if folks are, as I say, really ready to do something different in California, to try a new way, the way that, uh, that 47 other states do business, and, and moving us to a place where things can get better in California. Uh, finally, Mr. Chairman, what we're, what we're are trying to do here uh, is, is, is very transparent. California loses billions of dollars, billions of dollars by these delays. No one likes these delays. Our, 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 our projects uh, are stalled, and we can't pe could put projects and infrastructure projects on the street. Our bond rating suffers as a result of these delays. So what difference does it make? It makes a big difference to California's ability for its bond rating. Every billion dollars we put on the streets uh, uh, results in 17,000 jobs for Californians. And so this is real business during the time of a very severe uh, recovery for the people of the state of California. And that's why this initiative uh, is so important. And we, we at least need an honest debate about it. And that's what's frustrating me at this point, is that I see this debate going in the wrong direction. And I appreciate, Mr. Chairman, the hearing where we are trying to clarify.